Hi everyone, how are you? Uh, John Quinn here, just um, checking, did you all, anybody have any trouble with the link? There's a few people making comments about the link. Did you all get in okay? If anybody, let me know if there's any problems with that. We'll start in a moment. Just um, waiting for a few other people to join. Lynn, did you? The email yeah. to Peter something that said, it was a London event and it was closed. So I went to the original um, registration and the Zoom link there worked. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um, I'll have to check that. There's a few people uh, sent me a message. So it must have been finger trouble or Zoom trouble. Let's see if there's any. Right, so last week, thank you, Lauren. Okay, we'll have a look at that. But um, I think we'll soldier on. There's a few of us here, so we'll we'll just get started and let the other people uh, join in as we're coming along. So welcome along to the second uh, session, really covering uh, different areas around presentology. Uh, my name is Johnny Quinn, and I'm a presentologist. And uh, today I'm going to be taking you through some innovative use of slides. It, we're not going to get through all of it, but uh, we're going to possibly move that over and, and continue on next week. Um, looking at what we covered last week, we covered virtual presenting, um, which is, if anyone missed that, uh, I can send you the link to that to that recording. Um, we looked at how you, we set up a virtual em environment, such as I'm in now. Um, so how we set that up with a green screen. We looked at uh, using a de decent microphone and what sort of microphones to use and how to get connected uh, using different microphones and cameras, looking at different types of cameras. Uh, we, then, we then went on and looked at Prezi Video, which is a tool that allows you, your slides to appear beside you. Uh, we, today, we're just sharing PowerPoint because we're going to be looking at the back end of PowerPoint and some of the things that we can do in there. And we also covered some body language uh, areas as well. So we'll be, um, we'll be looking more at body language as we come along, as we move along. Um, there's another area that we're going to cover, which is um, looking at the common mistakes that people come up with and what errors people make. Um, which is kind of a nice way of focusing in on what the challenges are. And then uh, another area is our story, how where we create a good story using the rule of thirds, um, pictures, superiority effect, using props, um, dressing up numbers, finding different ways, finding your passion. Those are all areas that we cover when we look at story. But everybody last week was very keen to look at slides and that's really what we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna look at slides today, the different versions. We're gonna look at uh, how we use text and how we can make text appear better on a slide, um, how we can uh, treat images, work on logos, icons and infographics. And that's probably what we're gonna get through. We're not gonna get to data visualization today, but we will continue that on next week looking at animations as well and how we can use animations uh, and timelines, how we can create timelines. Once we've got all our slides together, then in theory, we would normally <clears throat> present them in some way. So we'd need to look at how we use public speaking as a real tool, especially in this new world we're in, where we're kind of presenting virtually and how we create some audience engagement. So that's the next one of the areas that we can cover as well is looking at different apps, Kahoot, different poll everywhere, free yeah. apps, yeah. some of them free. So uh, if you've got any questions as we go through, then keep, be, feel free to shout out as we're going along, just unmute yourself and uh, by all means ask a question if you want, but you can also type questions into the chat window and we'll come back to the chat window as we go through uh, the session today. And we're just gonna take a, about 45 minutes and then we'll come back to, we'll, we'll deal with some questions as we go through. Um, so please respond to any polls and. Having said that, I, I tried a poll last week and I had a bit of a drama with it. It didn't uh, show me the results, but let me just try a simple poll with you all, those of you that are here now. Um, so I'm running a poll now. You should be seeing a poll come up on your screen. And uh, you know, how are you doing today? Um, are you ready to go? Are you a bit low on energy? You need a coffee? Are you middling? Are you ready for sleep? Now I'm seeing your, your results coming through. So that's, that's uh, Zoom for you sometimes, you know, the polling uh, works perfectly. There's a few people who are at least one person who's a bit tired or four of you are a bit tired and ready for some sleep, but hopefully we'll wake you up as we go through this and give you some tools and techniques that you can use. So I'll just show you those results. So most of us are full of life and raring to go. Good. 
that's really what we need to do because we're going to focus in. So open your minds up to to what we're going to do, and we'll um, we'll we'll have a look at some of those things as we go through. Um, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, I'm using a little tool called I don't know if you've ever seen this remote control. It's called um, Logi Spotlight, Logitech Spotlight. It's a great presenter remote control. Yeah, but I can do. Yeah, and if I push and hold the bottom button on it, um, it will bring me back to my first slide in my whole presentation. So, um, and that, that, that slide is a slide that I'm using to, to, to really navigate around all of the different areas that I'm going to cover. So there are, there are quite a few areas in our, in our typical one day course, but we're essentially going to be looking at the amazing slide section next. And that's one of the sections that we're moving and moving through. So we're going to be looking at slides over the next while and how we can make them look better. Now, before we do that, I just want to highlight a couple of things to you. If I ask you, um, in terms of creativity and design creativity, to draw a horse, a flying horse, um, I want you to have a think about that. Have a think about drawing a flying horse and picture a flying horse in your mind. What would you? What would that image be uh, if I told you to picture a flying horse? Well, most people's immediate reaction to ask to draw a flying horse or to imagine a flying horse is this. Um, and that's poor sketch that I put together there. But most people see a horse with wings, a unicorn, you know, that sort of thing. Now, when I asked my 10 year old to draw a picture of a flying horse, this is what he drew. So um, here you see a rather scared looking horse inside a spaceship mm -hmm. and he's heading off. And just a quick comment around creativity. You know, I feel that we, we start off as children and we start off with very creative minds. And as we move into organizations and into sort of, you know, corporate world, we're told that no, it has to be, this has, this is what you have to form. So a lot of the creativity that I'm going to show you today are, is not typical of PowerPoint. It's, um, it's something else that we're using. And it's a, it's the same PowerPoint slide, but we're doing something different with it. And I'd like to uncover some of those slides with you today. Just another quick word on effort as well, the amount of effort that you put into something. You know, we live in a very fast food world or a fast, you know, give us an instant response. And later we're going to look, probably not in this session, but at the, when we come on next week to look at the, some of the future tools that are available in PowerPoint, there are some awesome new tools that are, give you instant gratification, design, you know, immediately change my design. But you can see here in this image that really, you know, time, creates is where creativity is really created. If you do try to do something very quickly, it isn't going to look the best that it could be. And lastly, just as one of my favorite quotations around experience, you know, that really a lot of the things that I'm showing you today are being really sort of created over 20 years of experience. And I'm hoping obviously to shortcut that for you and uncover some of the ways that we've done things. So our experience is really what's taken time to put together. In, in terms of putting the whole messaging together and how we put it together. So we've got 16 areas or roughly sort of 12 areas ideally that we want to cover. And I'm going to take you through the main ones of those as we move through it. Um, and it's really important that, you know, before you start on anything with PowerPoint that you understand the basics. And I'm quite surprised sometimes that people don't know the basics and um, that we have, you know, over on the left hand side here of our slide, we typically have the slide sorter view. We have an edit window. We have a, a bar down the bottom that we can lift up and bring up the notes pages where we type notes in and notes can do different things. Um, and they can, for example, they could be your notes that you're reading on a slide, but they can also be used for printing out and for distributing to people when you create a PDF. Um, so there are different things that you can do with it, but I'm gonna show you where you can find out this basic information. Um, and I'm giving you a QR code here. If you wanted to grab your phone and snap it, it will take you right there now. Um, and I'm going to give you all of these slides later on. So don't worry too much about uh, taking too much down, but I'm gonna make sure you get these slides. But this is really uh, free online training from Microsoft on the basics, on the basics of PowerPoint. So how to lay things out, how to put text and tables in, inserting pictures. So. I'm assuming a basic knowledge of PowerPoint here, and I'm using PowerPoint for Office 365. Yeah, that's what I'm currently using. Now, some of you may be using Mac PowerPoint, and we can talk about that if you want, but they're subtly different, yeah? So we're using Office 365 and PowerPoint for Office 365, and that's where Microsoft roll out the latest features, and the latest feature sets are all in there, yeah? 
So if there's any questions, then just throw them in the chat at any point. A couple of people can't see my screen, and that's possibly because you're not using the Zoom app. You need to be in, have Zoom installed to be able to view this, this slide share, the sharing. If you're just viewing it in a window, it can be a bit of a challenge. But we'll make sure that you get the re recording of this afterwards, and that we're certainly going to make sure you get all of the slides as well. So let's have a look at, uh, at some, of the, uh, some of the next areas that we would like to focus in on. The other thing that I've put in to, to, for, for you to take away is what I call the control language. So the language of control. So we all know control C, control V. We know how to cut, copy and paste. But do you know control D, for example, will duplicate something or control A will select everything. Control M is a new slide and using your keyboard, uh, these keyboard sh uh, shortcuts can make your life much faster when you're designing, when you're working on something. So I've put these in here so that just in case there's some of them that you maybe didn't know and haven't, haven't worked with before. And the most obvious thing to work on right away is work with text. A lot of our slides have text on it. In fact, a lot of slides have too much text on it. And how do we make text? look better. Well, this text you can see on the top line is got a very small amount of kerning. And I want to introduce you to a word called kerning, K-E-R-N, which is the distance between each character, not between words, but between the characters on the screen. And this can really create a, a, a nice looking font size, once the font size is over a certain size, over say 40 point font, it can really be used very well. If it's under 40 size font, it tends to crash together. And I wanna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna skip out of PowerPoint show mode now, and I'm going to take you out to, this is the edit mode, um, and hopefully you can all see that and you can all see what I'm doing. We've got this uh, text at the top here. And as you can see, this text is current very tightly. You can see that all the, all the text is kind of very closely together and this text is very loose. And how do we, um, how do we actually adjust that? Well, if you come up here to the, to the little uh, font area in the toolbar, you will see you've got to make things bold and shadowed, but there's a button here called AV, which allows us, which is called character spacing or kerning. And, and, and we can adjust the spacing of different te of text. We can adjust if it's very, very loose, we can make things very loose, or we can bring things down to be tight or very tight. And that is something that we would, as designers, play with quite a bit. We would look at that in terms of putting the text on the screen. We would then kern the text and, we would ch and that would change the look of it. And look, a lot of what we're trying to do when we create a, an interesting looking slide is to make it not look like PowerPoint. So if things look like PowerPoint, it's because we're using the default. So we don't want to use the default. So if we tweak it slightly, then it stops looking like a PowerPoint slide. And that's essentially what we're trying to do. So if you're making slides that don't look like PowerPoint, then you're succeeding. So kerning is one of the main things we do when we put text on a slide. Let me give you a real life example of that. And on our next slide here, we have a couple of icons, which will come on and look at how we put those onto a slide and how we do some work with those. But you can see that this top line of text has been kerned quite tightly. And then the word opportunity is kerned really quite loosely. And just by changing that, it changes the look of it. If I animate this slide and run it as a full screen slide, you'll see that the icons wipe in and then the text appears. And that's just one block of text. And quite often we get asked, you know, how do you make that? How do you, how do you make that text look different? And that's one of the ways we play with kerning, um, which is just this AV, AV character spacing in, in all text. And, and that's one of, the, one of the ways you can do that. So just by putting some text in and creating some kerning, you, you make it look different. Let's move on to shapes and images. What can we do with shapes and images? Well, essentially PowerPoint is, is, is made up of shapes and pictures and we play with them. Yeah, we do, we do different things to them. So let's have a look at a before and after slide. Now here's the before version. Can anyone, anybody want to make a comment on this? I mean, this is, this is what was given to us. Um, what does the, what does the shape remind you of? Anybody want to shout out there? Feel free to unmic yourself and shout out. Does it look like a PowerPoint shape? Yeah, it, it kind of looks like PowerPoint, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a PowerPoint chart. It's one of the sort of standard shapes that you can Smart put into shape. PowerPoint. Yeah, 
Thank you, Zamir. So it's 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 one of those standard kind of looks of of PowerPoint, and it immediately says PowerPoint to you. the The picture in the center you can see is sort of a standard picture. And if we one of the most basic things we do in PowerPoint is to put a picture on a white background. If you want your PowerPoint to be the same as everyone else's, then put a picture on a white background because that, and put four bullet points on the left hand side and maybe put your logo in the corner and. Now you've got a PowerPoint slide, yeah? So everyone will see that as PowerPoint, but we wanna do something different. So this is the before, and this is what we did to it. This is the after. So just um, soak that up for a moment and ask yourself what's different between the first one and the second one? Well, there's a couple of things. We've got rid of the shape altogether. Yeah, we've removed the shape and we've taken the text out and put it into text boxes and we've carried it slightly different. We've changed the character spacing to make the text look less PowerPointy. The other thing we've done is you notice that the text is very close to the picture. We've got no background on the picture. Yeah, so we've removed the background from the picture. Now, if you were to do that in Photoshop, you would take the picture in and you would draw around it and you would save the picture and you would cut it out. You would remove it onto another layer and you would move and you would then take that picture and bring it into PowerPoint. But thankfully in PowerPoint, there is the ability to do that. Now, if you don't learn anything from today, if you just did this one thing, I assure you it would change the look of your PowerPoint slides because you would not be using the standard sort of square picture on a white background. So let's have a look at how we go about doing that, yeah? So here, we, here we're back to that first slide and you can see we've got the, the nice big, the, the nice image on it with the, with the background, yeah? So we've got the background. So how do we remove the background from the picture? Well, if we click on the picture, we get a contextual menu up here called picture format. And then I move over to the far left-hand side and I've got remove background. So I can actually remove the background from any image. Now, PowerPoint, as soon as I click on remove background, starts to show me what it's going to delete. It's going to delete the pink areas of the picture. And that would be a problem here because it's going to remove a lot of what I want. I want to keep, I just don't want the face. I want to also keep all of the, the, the dress and the, the headdress as well that this gentleman's wearing. So how do we, how do we define what we want to keep and what we want to remove. Well, we can do that up in the far left-hand corner. We have mark areas to keep and mark areas to remove. So if I say to it, if I click on mark areas to keep, my mouse now becomes like a pencil and I can click and draw lines across the areas of the picture that I want to keep. I don't have to be exact. I just have to tell it, this is the color. I'm essentially identifying the colors that I want to keep. Make sure you're not telling it to remove things, but as you work along and click on things, you can see that very quickly, PowerPoint starts to work out what you wanna keep and what you wanna remove. Once you're finished, you say keep changes up at the top, and we've now removed the background from that picture. Now, that took a couple of minutes. If I was to do it in Photoshop, it would take longer. It would certainly take some more time to do that. So it's a case of just learning that you can do that in PowerPoint. Once you're able and able to do that, there's a whole range of different things you can start doing with those pictures because you can now, if you think about it, have, if you have a, a sunset, you could in theory remove part of the picture and then maybe have the sun moving or you could have one picture changing in front of the other. Um, here, what we've done is we've taken each one of these text boxes, each one of these, uh, each one of these words, and we've also put them into individual text boxes behind. And I think most of us are probably capable of that of putting text into a text box, you insert a text box and add the text, we've changed the, um, we've changed the colors. And then we find the last thing we've done is we've done a bit of animation, which we'll have a look at next week when we come on and look at some of the, the more advanced animations you can do. This animation is really simple. It's just called rise up or, um, you know, float in upwards. And that's, that's created it. Now, be aware of animations in Zoom because overly animated stuff in Zoom isn't necessarily gonna translate well to the other side. So while we love animation and we like animating things over time, 
um, you know, we really have to be careful in Zoom because you don't know what the people are necessarily seeing at the far end, if at all. So you need to be careful, careful of that. But here's an example of an animation. I'm hoping you, you're able to see it. It's uh, from Camp Glenorchy here down in New Zealand. And uh, these are the two owners of the, of the camp, of the people who set it up. And notice this is what we've done. So we've created almost what you would call a pull focus effect where I'm, I'm moving the background and you know the people are cut out in front of it. Now, how do you go about doing something like that? Uh, I'm hopefully, Zamir, if you can just confirm you're seeing that, you're seeing those sort of movements. We, we're kind of shrinking yep. the back. It's so a little bit jerky, but uh, it's a little bit slow, but uh, we can you're see the animation. It. Good, good. Yep. So you're seeing it just in terms of it's happening very smoothly here with, with me. So I just want to show you um, how you'd go about doing something like that. Well, this was the original picture that we were given. Um, and we, you can see that the picture here is on our PowerPoint slide. And notice over here, I've cropped and removed the people from the picture. So all I've really done is I've used the picture background removal to remove them from the picture. And then I'm going to put them essentially just in front of themselves. And the picture is being told to, in animations, to shrink a little bit. Yeah, so that, and we'll look at that in animations. But essentially by putting them in front of themselves, you don't see them anymore and the picture shrinks. So that's essentially how we're doing that. We're putting things on one layer on top of the other. Just a quick word about layers. Why is PowerPoint like an onion? Well, apart from the fact that it makes us cry sometimes, it also is built around layers. And a lot of you are only working in two dimensions. So you just see a flat slide and you just put whatever you need on the slide. But the fact is, is that you can put stuff in front and behind each other. So if I click on these people and say, send to back, they will disappear behind the layer of the picture. If I, write, if I click on them again and say bring to front, they will jump to the front. So you can move things in layers back and forwards. And it's important that you understand that when you come into animations or when you come into doing something like this. So I put them, and if you create something new, it always appears on the front layer, but you can orientate things through the layers. So here, for example, we have uh, a box, which is a shaded box. And by the way, I've got a whole range of free shaded boxes and stuff for you, um, to, which I'll be giving out in the links in the show notes from, from today. Uh, here we have some nice looking, it's actually a picture rather than a font, but uh, you could have a font here as well. But this text is also editable and we've also got the logo. So if we now animate that whole slide, you'll see that they're moving behind and then in comes the text on top. The, the shaded box has been brought in just to allow somewhere to host the text, to have the text on the slide. Cool. So covered a few different things. Are there any questions on any of that? Any, anybody got any, any significant questions you want to ask? Please feel free to just type them into the chat and I'll pop back and forward to the chat. If I haven't seen any, any questions or any comments on that, but uh, feel free to, to type them in if you've got any questions as we move through. So that's, um, that's the layering and in terms of putting things together. Good. Thanks, Siobhan. Cool. So that's the picture background removal tool. And it's one of the most fundamental things that we use um, in terms of creating new slides. So you could, in theory, create a slide like this. This, this is the chairman. He was given to us as his full profile picture. We then have put him on, cut him out, and we've put him on the layer. So here's, for example, an animated slide showing a comment from the chairman. So we've got an image on the background. We've got then the person sitting on the front and we've got also, we've got some boxes going through with the text on top of it. So this is a made up slide, multifaceted layers on top of one another, allowing you to create a story or to, to create a slide with some depth to it. So, and this is all built. Just a, just a quick, uh, just a quick comment on this one, what John is uh, showing you guys. Uh, if you don't use a high res image, the picture background removal might not work perfectly. So PowerPoint will use some sort of algorithm to remove the background. But if the picture is like really low res, so uh, it might not work perfectly. So if the picture is high res enough, then you can actually use it um, with perfection. And also um, if the background is already too busy, then PowerPoint will take some time to remove uh, the background and you might have to take some, you know, do some extra effort to remove the background. 
Thanks, Amir. So um, I'm based in Queenstown in New Zealand, and Zamir is based in Dubai. He's one of our, he's our senior uh, sort of business development manager, but also he's an excellent graphic designer and knows how to put it together. So yeah, an image that's a very low resolution um, and can, can cause problems. PowerPoint is roughly a thousand pixels across by 800 high. So you're looking for pictures that are a thousand by 800, roughly resolution. Um, to be able to get a decent full screen image. You don't want that little 150 by 150 pixel picture because it isn't going to be able to do that. So just watch the sizes of your picture. Similarly, we don't want a 16,000 by 8,000 picture because that would be way too many uh, to, to, to higher resolution. So just to reiterate that again, 1,000 by 800 approximately is the size. This is actually 1024 by 768, the size of a typical uh, 16 by nine PowerPoint slide. So that's, um, that's really the picture background removal tool and one of the ways we deal with shapes. Um, we'll come back to shapes a little bit later because you know this, um, this box that we've got uh, the chairman's message in, you can see here, this box is actually a shape. So it's an insert, a rectangle, um, but notice that we can see through that picture. If I zoom in a little bit on it and be aware that you can zoom in in PowerPoint, you can see here that we can actually you know, behind the, the gentleman's head here, we can see through this box. Yeah, it's a rectangle, but it's actually also transparent. And we're going to look at how we switch on and how we control transparency. Because when we've got different elements on a slide, we don't want them big blocks. We want to be able to see through them to allow imagery to come through and, to te and some text to come on top. So that's important. Cool. Logos and branding, yeah. So again, a couple of examples, and then let's have a look at how they actually are, are built. Um, when we look at logos generally, now here's one of my favorite logos in the bottom right hand corner. Ask yourself, you know, are we doing it justice? Yeah, I mean, this is a beautifully built logo. It's English left to right and Arabic right to left. So it's, you know, it, it's somebody spent a huge amount of time on it. So this is the before slide that was given to us and, you know, you can see it's a typical PowerPoint slide. Yeah, it's got you know poor use of uh, of an image on it. It's got poor use of you know the bullet points. Um, you know that someone's going to read that. Um, it's got some spelling mistakes, as you can see. So there's some real challenges with changing something like that. So that is that's the before, and then this is the after. So if we have a look through it, you'll see that we've got some pictures moving, and then we've got the logo nice and big and well presented on the screen. And we talk to people about this all the time that you need to celebrate your brand. You need to somehow at the start of your presentation and at the end with a call to action, you need to have some celebration of your logo and your logo should, you know, you should be proud of it. It should be something that you can really, you know, it's descriptive. And here you can see if we just run that last bit, you'll see that we're doing that the whole logo is broken up into different parts. Yeah. So we're using the lines to introduce it and then we've broken the logo up and we're animating the logo in PowerPoint. Now that might take a few hours work, but it's, um, it's definitely worth doing because it communicates your brand, it communicates who you are and, and what you're interested in. A couple of other examples here, you can see we've split up the entire logo here into the individual parts. So that's the only way that we could do this animation by wiping and bringing each individual object onto the slide. So that's, that's one of the ways we can do it. Didn't play well, okay, just want me to play that again. So I'll just, um, yeah, that, the Dubai one to typically yeah, is, is, is uh, can, take, can take a moment or two to come up. Um, so yeah, let me just play it again. So you see the lines appear and then we've got the actual logo. So we've broken the logo up into the different parts. And yep, Emirates is another good example. And here we have, Simpler example, but notice how the brand uh, and the introduction of the logo also works through and into the slides. So we see a whole range of movements. So we've brought the colors from the brand into the actual presentation as well. And I think this, this worked very nicely. So your logo and moving your logo and creating an animation, it is an important aspect to, to creating, to making your slide look good. Um, just a little bit of, let's break it down a little bit in terms of what we're doing. Um, so if I start to move some of this stuff around and you're very welcome to, um, to get copies or to see how we do this, um, you, 
essentially what we're doing is everything is an individual object on the slide, including the logo. So we've just got individual parts of the logo. And one of the challenges that people have is getting to the different layers and how we get to them. And that's under home and uh, can all, you can also f find the selection, the select, select and the selection pane. And the selection pane is a little window that shows us all of the different elements that are on a slide. So we can hide them all, which will remove everything. And we can turn on individual elements that are on the slide. And you can hopefully now start to appreciate that when we build a really nice looking PowerPoint slide, everything is a layer on it. And each layer has got an animation. And the selection pane allows us to either show them all or hide them all or and switch on the individual layers. So if you've ever been that person who's had multiple pictures on top of one another and you're pulling things out of the way, then this is where you go to get your, your, your sort of the different layers and, it, and, it, and get to the different layers. Yes, you can, thanks Sarah, good question. Yes, you can rename the different elements. So for example, um, if I click on the, the background picture here, which is the picture, you see it says picture nine. I could then call that, you know, I could change that to be fort and in, in the layer here in the selection pane. And notice that that word fort will also apply, that, that layer will also apply an animation. So if you're building a really nice animation, then you can, on, can then also see what you're animating and you can actually see those in the animation. So that layer then becomes named that way. And I can also, re I can also um, reorder the layer by picking these layers up and moving them up or down. Yeah, so I can change the layer in terms of where they go from hierarchical from the top to the bottom. So that's one of the things we do. I'm just picking up com comments as we're going along. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, no problem. So that's, um, that's, that's, the, sort of, um, that's the sort of process that we go through to building a logo animation. Yeah, and honestly, we could spend the next, we could just spend the next half hour just on that. So, you know, we, we, we train, we teach people how to do this, but we also, you know, once you've built it once, then, you know, essentially you can copy paste it. It's a slide and you can move it wherever you need to be. You could put it into a slide library manager. Emirates again was a case of breaking everything up. It ends up with just the full logo at the end. But if I start to delve down into the different layers and we have the red block, you can see that every single element is broken up and then animated afterwards. So um, it's just a case of building those in terms of putting that together. So that's, um, that's, that's the logo and putting a logo on the slide. The next thing I'd like to really focus in on is looking at just checking the chat. Yeah, hiding a layer. Yeah, okay, thank you for the reminder. One last comment there, that if I have different layers and I hide a layer, I turn it off, um, I can also hide the animation. So the animations go with the layers. So if you've got a wipe or something, and we did actually consider this once, you could build an entire template for a company in one slide and have them all on different layers and just turn the layers off and on. So if you need a, a chart sometimes and you just go in and switch on that layer and the layer will come in and so will the animation. So um, yeah, it's, it's one way of using PowerPoint, but the layer, the selection pane is, is something of a revelation to people. Sometimes they have never found it. So icons and infographics, um, yeah, those are our sort of go-to space in terms of communicating. And here's a slide from a while back. Now, what do we think? Do we, this is the before element to it. Um, I personally think these people are getting it. Whoever created this slide has got, you know, has got the idea. They've got their logo in the center and they've got different inf infographics and icons appearing around it. But fundamentally, there's too much information. Yeah. So TMI, too much information is a constant challenge. And what we see here is the center is a is the logo, that's the first slide. And then we see four other slides, at least, if not five slides. So there's five slides on one here. And especially in today's world, post COVID, presenting on Zoom, you cannot really put a slide like this up. It's got too much information in it. If you are going to take people through it, then you wanna, you know, you wanna split this down to into individual slides. So let's have a look at how we would do that. So we would start off with a logo, which is important to, to some sort of animation and um, where it's for or some sort of comment around it. Um, on my slide, I've got a lot of movement and different things moving along. It may not be translating very well to you because this, these slides have a lot of animation on them. 
But let's just take one of those points, yeah? We have the, the 35 years of experience. Now, here we have the, the picture of the brain, yeah? Where do we get those from? Where do you find an icon of a brain that you can put onto your slide or an icon of whatever you're looking for? Where do we find those, yeah? Okay, thank you, Sarah, good question. Um, Sarah is asking, do slides display on the same on everyone's slide, whether someone has a widescreen monitor or otherwise? Um, the, generally, if you've got a widescreen presentation, which you should have in today's world, you should not be using four to three. Four to three is, is old school. So we should be using widescreens. So widescreen presentations generally um, will translate to widescreen on the other side. Yeah, they would, yeah. And especially, um, thanks MC, too many animations, especially parallel ones, uh, impose a visual lag penalty over web conference. Absolutely, that's the point I'm making. So, you know, too, I, I'm pushing the bounds of it here with some of the animations I'm showing you. You don't want to over animate in a, in a, in a video conference and, and you want to try and keep it as, as simple as possible and animations as simple as possible. Okay, cool. So, yeah, sorry, there was a formatting error on the Y. Somebody just highlighted, thank you. So where do we find an icon like this? Well, I've got a couple of different suggestions for you. And actually, as a gift today, I've got one and a half thousand icons because icons essentially, some of them are, are you know, are, have got rights associated with them, but generally icons are royalty free. So if I was looking for a, a picture of a brain, wouldn't it be good if there was a library in PowerPoint? Well, yes, there is. So you go to insert and we now have got icons. You might, may notice here um, up on the top. Now, if you don't have it, it's because you don't have Office 365 or you're not using that version. So we, we now have a full icon library built into PowerPoint. And it's, it was poor, um, I would say six months ago, but it's certainly come on leaps and bounds. So in terms of what you're looking for. So if we're looking for an icon for a brain, then we've got a whole range of different brains here that we could put in. So we would pick one of them, click insert, and notice that the come in is a vector image. And what does that mean? That means that it doesn't have any background. It's sitting on top. I can change the graphics fill of it. I could change it to any color I want and notice that the colors work, work perfectly. Um, and you could then put put an icon, and that, you know, is simply how you can start adding icons to your slide. One of the key things we want you to do is to get rid of the bullet points and start adding more icons. We believe that icons are sort of more descriptive. So if you've got four bullet points and you want to try and switch off the bullet points, segment up the text and have an icon with each of them, and we'll look at some examples of that as we move forward. But yeah, so. Just putting the um, putting an icon onto a slide can really change the look and feel of it. A few more questions coming in. Um, can you add your own library of images um, and icons? No, not to my knowledge. You can you can have your own, and we would um, typically, if we're working for a corporate and building out a whole slide deck we would build out a whole slide deck and then we would also have pages of icons later on. So if you needed really descriptive icons, um, but not in that library, that library is uh, the online library. But here, here, for example, we've created icons that, that didn't exist. The far right hand icon here didn't exist and we actually created that. So in terms of getting a message across here, in this next slide, we've compiled images and icons together. Um, so we've used a picture background removal tool, we've used icons and we've used shapes. And so this really, in fact, one of us, I think, took this sign and took a, took a picture of this, uh, this sign on the road and uh, we removed the, we filled in, filled in the center and this is actually PowerPoint text. So you can edit this text as you need it. So, um, you know, you, you can start to get creative with this stuff once you start putting it together in terms of how, how it looks and feels. So yeah, that's, if I animate some of these, I'll just show you the animation because these, although these slides are busy, um, I, when they're actually animated, they appear in. So again, I'm not sure if you're seeing all of these animations and um, they're maybe just appearing all in one go, but in, on my, at my end when I'm, and remember, you know, 
we're talking about video conferencing, but that's not just what we do with PowerPoint. We don't just, um, you know, go on Zoom calls. We also, for example, may make a video out of it. So you can save this slide as a video and upload it to Instagram. So you could use, you know, fa Facebook marketing. You could create little stories built in PowerPoint saved out as video. And it's important that you remember that PowerPoint is able to do that. You can export a PowerPoint as a video. You can now export a PowerPoint as an animated GIF as well. So it'll create GIF files, which are looping essentially the little animations. And some websites see GIFs differently to videos. You don't have to upload them to YouTube. So there's a whole range of new features within PowerPoint. And we're gonna to touch on those as we move forward through this course. Um, really highlighting how you can export it and how you can save the PowerPoint out. So I could save this slide as a video, for example. So although it may not be great over Zoom, it would also be um, very, very useful. So let's have a look at just some basic moving from this moving forward. I'm going to step, step these slides forward just to give an idea of what you could do with it. So this is typically what we'd start off with. We start off with a with, with a list and a bullet, bulleted list, as you saw there. So you've got a list of bullet points. Um, by the way, are you seeing my spot? I hope you're seeing my spot. I'm highlighting, I'm highlighting, you might be seeing my mouse. So here we've got a list of bullet points. What typically would we do with those? We would turn those into icons, yeah? So the idea is to then create, get rid of the bulleted list and create more of an icon list, yeah? So that's using icons. That's a simple, simple use of it. So we've, got, we've put a circle on the screen and then we've put an icon into a circle. Straightforward way of making your slide look less PowerPoint. -y. You could then put a picture in the background. So we've added an image into the background now um, to try and create you know, a little bit more interest. We've also, in the top left here, put a banner across and we've put an icon just on the banner, just to, to identify what's what's going on. Let's also have a look at maybe a series of, of text boxes. So you've taken your list of bullet points and you've put them into a series of text boxes. Well, here now we're adding an icon to each of those text boxes beside it. So this again stops PowerPoint looking like a list of bullet points that people are going to read. You can now separate it out. It would be better if there were six, but if I put the title on there now, and then maybe change the color to be black in the background. Which do you prefer? Do you like a white background or do you like a black background? Um, I don't know, the jury is out on it. White is the default in PowerPoint and most people's slides have a white background. And I would urge you to think of another color or certainly have different colors for different lines of business. Yeah, that would break it up as well. You want to visually play with the eye of your audience. You don't want it to be, you know, sort of straightforward. You want to try and change it up as you go through. And, you know, simple is not stupid. If you remember the, um, you know, if you remember the horse in the, in the spaceship, there's no big problem. Thank you, Zamir. You now have access to nice royalty-free stock images and cut out photos in the same library. Yep, yep, gotcha. Okay, so that's probably worth highlighting as well. Yes, so Zamir is just highlighting that we've also in that library, we can insert, um, we mentioned that we can insert icons, but we also have insert pictures. And if we go to pictures, we have pictures on this device, but we also have a very nice stock images and online pictures, which are access to royalty free pictures as well. So those are, those are perfectly formatted for PowerPoint as well. So that was really just, you know, using icons and creating more engagement using icons um, and probably what I'll drop, I'll jump over now is the, the, the media side of things, because I'm keen to show you what you can do once we start putting those together, icons onto a slide. And, you know, it's really about sort of telling stories. So I just again want to, for anybody that wasn't here last week, and um, we looked at some of these slides, but I want to show you some examples of before and after. So here we've gone from this to this. Okay, so we're taking, a, obviously the slide was referring to demographics, so it makes sense to do something with a, with a map. And these are all a map with icons. Here you'll see big use of, of an infographic, an icon. We're taking the 8% year on year and we're bringing in some nice big icons. So the thing about vector icons is that you can make them huge. You can really scale them up. And you know, if this was a, 
big launch or a big piece of information, then it would be great. You know, it's a great way to communicate and to celebrate something with a big. And yet some people we see just do this as a, as a bulleted point. Uh, why not do something and really celebrate it? Again, looking at maybe charts and tables. Do you really need to use a chart or a table? It's kind of the default and everybody's going to do it. Well, if you're going to do it, then why don't you try something different and do something different with it? So here we've taken that same data and moved it over to, to something that's more interesting and, and sort of creating more of an interest through using the colors and the layouts, et cetera. Here we've got, again, a situation where somebody absolutely needed this chart to be in their slide. So it's a case of what can we do to make this chart look better? Well, we'll come on to that when we look at charts uh, later on, um, probably next week we'll look at that and go into more detail on making charts looking better. But really essentially what we do is we keep the chart. So here's the after. We keep the same chart, but we format it differently. So we remove the tick lines from the back of it and we color each of the blocks, for example and then bring an image in. You've learned how to cut out an image. You can see that that's PowerPoint text in the bottom right hand corner, so you can edit and change it. But this chart is absolutely linked to the Excel in the back end. So if you change something or you wanted to change a number, then it would be easy to change it as well. And then we can start to get creative with some motions and movements. Here we've started to create some, some more extreme levels of charts where we're trying to show essentially the uh, the scale of things and changing scales can be a real challenge for people. If I've got a lot of data and I want to make everything smaller, then I would need to move it and to be able to really create some, some drama in terms of creating the scale. Now, for anyone that's interested in this type of thing, please get in touch with us. This is, um, this is an, a graphical representation of a chart. This is not actually a chart. We cannot link the chart, these sort of chart objects to data. Um, so essentially this is not Excel in the background anymore or a chart, uh, PowerPoint Excel. It's actually a, a, a graphical element just to display it. These are just different examples of creating charts and making things look a little bit more interesting. So I've got another comment coming in there. Can Keynote do the same as PowerPoint? Great question. Um, look, can Keynote, yes, a lot of the things are, are very, very cross, can cross over and Keynote's got some excellent uh, features in it. The challenge we find is that most of our clients are using um, PowerPoint Office 365 and they're using PC-based PowerPoint, most. Most people we talk to, that's what they want it in. Some people want Prezi, some people want Keynote, some people want Google Slides. Um, but essentially, Microsoft have a huge share of the market. So, you know, a lot of the information is asked for and to be created in PowerPoint. Unfortunately, PowerPoint's become synonymous with boredom and not being very good, but that's not true at all. In fact, you know, a lot of the features that we use in PowerPoint are available and it's all available to anyone. So it's really just a case of having a go and trying some of those things. Um, Keynote, we would use, I think I've used Keynote, we've used Keynote a couple of times, for example, um, would you, if you were to need a, um, a really beautiful flaming piece of text uh, for an awards dinner, Keynote would be perfect for that. Um, but it does a whole range of other things as well. Um, but we tend to find that PowerPoint is the sort of standard around which we're working. Cool, let's keep moving with a few other examples um, just to, to, to get you sort of thinking about it. A list of bullet points. Now we're talking about the key drivers um, so we want to try and think of, you know, a little bit of creativity in terms of how we're going to do it. Now we can see tourism, economic, population, infrastructure, and, con and construction. So those are the main areas that, um, that we wanted to talk about here. So let's have a look at in full screen. And this is what we ended up with. So each one of those objects brought in in an interesting way using an icon to, to really create some, some, uh, you know, some more interesting visual communication. And what I really wanted was I wanted the hook on the crane to bring in the words commercial construction activity because that's kind of now animating or maybe I wanted, I saw the, the plane flew in a little bit, but you know, we want to create some interest on the slide. So we kind of went on with maybe something like this 
and these were our um, some of our last year's figures which would be serious sorely looking forward to coming back but you can see um, that this is the before and this is the after so again we're again would have liked to have seen the baggage maybe move on the carousel a little bit and maybe the numbers to to change but you know again you've got to be applicable to to what the audience is but this is where we started to get I, I really like the person going up the escalator because essentially what you're showing there is that you know there's a little bit of movement within it i'm not sure if you're seeing it but the little the, the symbol actually moves up the escalator and that's kind of where we think we're going animated infographics or animated uh, icons um, again we're all about trying to just make drag the eye in and make it more interesting but notice that the font sizes are much larger and um, we're up above 40 size font we're splitting things down into different slides not having everything on one slide getting rid of the text and trying to bring some imagery into it as well those are some of the kind of main examples of what what we do now in our one day course we slowly step through these examples and we work on with you on your own slides and we kind of you know take you step by step through it and uh, and, and yes i mean I, i'm giving you a sample of it here really today but um really you know it's all done in powerpoint and and it's just a case of moving it the escalator yes is an animation so the little the little person moving up the up the escalator is, is done in animations and we will be covering this it's called a motion path we'll be covering this in next week's session so we're going to start here the green arrow is where the person where, the, where this shape is going to start and the red arrow is where it's going to move to so for example um were i to move one of those then the the, the animation would change yeah the actual the, the motion path would change in terms of how it moves so you can you can edit and you can move paths so if we wanted it to move a little bit further everything is dynamically adjustable within powerpoint so now the the object's moving completely out of the way or completely off the end of the escalator so believe it or not anything is possible in powerpoint um i really haven't found anything that's impossible if you said to me i want to do this this and this then in theory there would be a, a way of doing it because essentially we're just creating layers and we're creating mo motions on top of it you know a spinning globe is the sort of thing we get asked for and yes there's a way to do that you know it's and i, I want you to be honest with you about this is that it's all smoke and mirrors a spinning globe is a is a mask that you put in front with an earth behind and you move it and there are techniques to all of it and our information as we often say our, our advice is free of charge just get in touch with us and if you've got a specific thing you want to do we can certainly point you in the right direction in the worst case in the best case we may have it sitting on the shelf we've made over twenty-seven thousand slides so there's bound to be a, a, an occasion we've come across it before. So um, we're very happy to support you in terms of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to put the content together. So if we've got any other questions, just we've come up to the last sort of seven or eight minutes. Um, I wanted to just uh, show you where you can get the slides from today and, uh, and really sum that up. So feel free to shout out any questions or put them together. I've really just given you a, an overview of uh, some of the animations and some of the movements. Um, next week we're going to come on and look at uh, some of the animations um, that we can do um, which are sort of the more in-depth animations um, looking at timelines which are timeline motions and being able to tell a story everybody wants a timeline in their slide everybody wants to sort of say this is where we started from this is where we're going to COVID start COVID-19 started here and it's moving this way being able to move your slides forward in, an, in a timeline is a great way to get that across and then I'd love to show you some of the new features of PowerPoint. For example, three-dimensional objects. Uh, here, I was working with Fisher and Paykel and we put some, some, uh, some, some ovens in, but I can actually spin and move these objects around and we can actually move and edit them. And then a whole range of new features in PowerPoint. Quick Starter, which is a research assistant. Designer will design your slides for you. Morph is a movement. Zoom is what I've been using today to, to move around between my different slides. Presenter Coach. And we've also got live captions and translation. So I can be speaking in English and you can be listening and watching captions in, in any one of 37 languages. And Maori's there and there's quite a few others. So we're going to look at some examples of those as we move forward and as we go forward with, it, with this uh, little course we're running. 
can you translate the Gantt, a Gantt chart into a PowerPoint slide? Yes, you could, of course, yeah. And you could move and animate it and you could also make it uh, interactive. Um, and I will make sure that you get the training from last week. Each week when I send out an email to the people that attend, I will give them the, 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 the previous week's um, connections as well and to, to the other slides. So um, yeah, we've got plenty to go through, believe me. So um, I'm looking forward to, to, to doing that with you. Um, if we have a look at just the, at the, at where we've got to in terms of the, in terms of uh, the content that we've covered, let me just grab, grab that for you. So we're covering, um, we've covered pretty much, we've looked a little bit of virtual presenting last week, as I mentioned. We've missed out common mistakes that people make in your story. Here we started on slides and we've certainly got two, if not three weeks or three hours. So I'm doing an hour uh, at the same time every week and um, it's all free of charge. There's no charge to that. I'm very happy to pass on what we do. And we've really looked a little bit today at um, really how we deal with text and shapes and images. We've looked at icons and uh, infographics and we touched a little bit on data visualization, but I'd like to go into more of that tomorrow uh, or sorry, next week. And then when we come back, we'll also look at uh, animations and timelines and some of those new features. And then following that, we'll come into looking at public speaking and how we deliver this stuff. And maybe we can recap on some of the ways we've looked at it, but also looking at some of the audience engagement tools that are out there as well. So I'm just want to check that that's a few questions coming in. Yep, you've got it on our YouTube channel for sure. Yep. So another quick, just I had a quick other poll for you there. Um, just to ask you, I just really want to um, check with you and uh, what you want to focus on next week. So I'll just launch the polling just to check that. So just let me know what you would really like to focus in on next week. Um, stay with the slides. Yeah, one person's agreed with me there. So, um, but for sure we'll cover all of those these different areas. But um, I, I understand some of you maybe missed the virtual presenting, but we'll send that through as we go through. And interesting to see that you, some of you would like to look at creating your story. And that's actually comes before, if you think about it, creating a slide. Slides are your, how you're gonna communicate, but you know, slides are terrible if you don't have a good story. So finding a, a good story is, is something we'll focus on as well. So it's good to see that uh, you're all stuck with me next week. Well, yep, we'll come back to making amazing slides and we'll look at how we do that. And uh, we'll, we'll work on that as we, as we go through. The, um, feel free, let me just show you the results. So most people wanna focus, 13 of you wanna focus on making amazing slides, which we'll come back and look at the, the second set of that as we go through and um, show you a little bit more please keep feel free to get in touch if there's anything we can do or if you want to have a if you want to if you've got any questions i'd love to see some there's no reason why some of you can't show me some examples of stuff you've done yourselves um, as i mentioned earlier our advice is free of charge we offer a free presentation health check you just i'm doing one tomorrow with someone where they're coming online they're presenting to me and i'm giving them feedback and that's absolutely something you, that we're very happy to offer as we go through so we will then um, we will send out the invite for next week's uh, online for next next webinar um, and it'll come to everyone today with a link to today's recording and uh, to, to the slides if you want to go and get the slides right away if you want to look at the slides right away then this is where you get them aalive.mobi is our little presenter website and um, you can hop in there now in there, I've got some really nice um, gifts for you. So there's a, there's a whole range of different slides with different objects and different icons in them. Um, there's a whole whole load of stuff that you can steal with pride, as we, we refer to. Uh, it's all royalty free, so you're very welcome to it. And uh, there's a whole range of different uh, different elements that you can, there's different tick marks, there's different uh, objects that you might want to put on a slide. So it's like a, it's almost consider it like a toolkit for, for a designer in terms of putting stuff together. And please feel free to give us some feedback on the, the flashing cursor there. There's a little survey in there. We'd love to have a survey. If you're in that little, little uh, link website there, you can just uh, grab all the information. So I think we're about on time. Um, I started a few minutes late and probably can take one question if everybody's got, anybody's got one in particular, but um, otherwise I think we've covered the questions as we've gone through, which was kind of new for me. I'll, I, I typically 
pat pack all the questions at the end, but I actually think it's a good idea. I saw someone doing it during the week to go through the questions as people bring it in. It's a little bit harder for the presenter, but I totally, uh, hopefully you agree, uh, agree it kind of creates a conversation as you're moving forward through this. So thank you very much for coming along and I really appreciate it. And we'd love to uh, keep in touch with you all. Keep in touch and have a good week out there. I will see you same time, same place next week. Look forward to it. Have a great week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.